Okay. okay. Welcome to the February meeting of the W3C WebRTC Working Group. We're going to have a 90 minute meeting to this month, and then we'll go back to the usual two hours in the months ahead. So a reminder of the IPR policy, we abide by the W3C patent policy and only companies uh, and people that are listed on the status page are allowed to make substantive contributions. So uh, today we're going to cover WebRTC SVC, which I will go over, and then multi-capture, which Alad will talk about. Um, our future meetings are on the third Tuesday of the month. So the next ones will be on March 15th, April 19th, and May 17th, at, starting at the same time of 8 a.m. Pacific. So hopefully we'll see you folks for the next couple of meetings as well. Um, so a little bit about the meetings. Um, we have the meeting info up there and the link to slides is on the, on the wiki. Uh, we do need a scribe, somebody to take notes on what has happened. Uh, we are being recorded and the recording will be public. So do we have a volunteer for note taking? Dom did a fantastic job last time. But we're not asking we're not asking people to live up to that standard. It's pretty amazing. Do we have a volunteer? Yeah, the note taking is is pretty important. Uh, we have we, we we can't really go on unless we have a note taker. So uh, we, we may have to draft somebody. And I'm looking at Tim Panton. <laughs> uh, really? Okay. I mean, I mm, I feel like I did half of it last time. So no, you did, and you did a great job. So yeah, I mean, and this is my punishment for that, is it? <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> We'll punish you until you do a bad job. Uh, yeah, I could do that. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I'm, I'm slightly hesitant because I'm really stunningly ignorant on the uh, on both of these, so I don't really understand what's going on. So, um, well, how about that? Actually, may be good because <laughs> uh, all you really have to do, I think, the essential thing is just the decisions we make, and I think we'll just outline them and tell you, hey, we have made the following decision. If we make it okay I'll, I'll do that and i'll i don't think if, if it's all right i won't use the irc channel because i think that that slows me down even more uh, yeah i think that's okay if i think yeah all right uh thank you very much tim all right so so if, if you don't understand the the decision ask again because if uh, you don't understand it probably many others don't understand it either and then it's not really a decision that's right. That's a good point. <laughs> Keep us on. Okay. So let's try to be really clear about what decisions we make. Okay, the W3C code of conduct, we operate under it. Uh, and let's try to keep the conversations cordial and professional. So a little bit about uh, the submitting tips. Uh, it, we may run a queue. I don't know if we have that many people, but if so, type plus Q and minus Q in the Google Meet chat, and then we'll try to manage and and give everybody time. Uh, of course, the headphones for the echo and wait for the microphone access so we can actually hear you. So thank you. I don't, I don't think we'll be using poll today. but So uh, just a reminder about document status. Uh, we're trying to be clear about that. Just because something's in a repo in the WC doesn't mean it's been adopted. We actually use call for adoptions to do a formal uh, look at the adoption. And editor's drafts don't represent working group consensus, but working group drafts do. Um, and it's possible we'll sometimes merge PRs that lack consensus, but uh, should have a note to in indicate controversy. 
Okay, so uh, for today we have WebRTC SVC and multi-capture, as I mentioned. Uh, we're because we only have two things on the agenda. We're giving people a little bit more time. So on the WebRTC SVC, we'll go until uh, 8:45, and then we'll move over to a lot uh, and go to uh, 9 9:20. All right. So WebRTC SVC. So uh, we're going to try to cover four issues. And then uh, I will just give you a sense of a PR, rather long PR, um, that I uh, submitted to try to address 57, 58, and 59. Uh, but we won't try to get consensus on that because it's too big. We'll, we'll just let people review it and get up and try to, try to figure it out. Um, so we're going to start with 49. Um, and so uh, folks may have seen there's an, an API called Media Capabilities that has added functionality for scalability modes. Um, and so the question is, is that redundant with Get Capabilities, which is in the WebRTC SVC API? So uh, now there's a bigger issue, 95, which was, I think, filed in WebRTC Extensions, which is overall about Get Capabilities in the entire WebRTC API. but uh, we won't be talking about that at the moment um, because there's some other associated uh, PRs with that one. So the basic, the only question we're trying to answer right now is do we need, in fact, sender.get capabilities or can we get everything we need out of media capabilities? That's kind of the question. So basically, uh, this media capabilities API now includes something called configuration.video.scalability mode. Um, as I'll describe, you to give it a bunch of things to get back whether get back the info on the scalability mode you need to put in the width height bit rate and frame rate um, and I'll, I'll show you what the api surface looks like in a minute but basically you you input these things in configuration.video and then you get back uh, whether the scalability mode is supported smooth or power efficient so you call navigator.media capabilities that encoding info on that configuration. Um, and basically what you do is if you iterate over all the scalability modes, you can, you can get info on essentially on the capabilities of the uh, encoder. Uh, so I don't know, it's a little bit of an eye chart, but hopefully people can see this. Um, I wrote up a little demo uh, at this URL, uh, webrtc.internet.com slash mc. Uh, and so here I've got all the modes that are in the document and basically uh, do a for each over each of the modes. And then um, you can you can basically look. when The idea here is you choose a codec, uh, and then for that codec you iterate over all the modes and you can figure out if it's uh, supported, smooth, or power efficient. So this is basically a little, a little test whether you can in fact duplicate what's in get uh, capabilities. So, um, so a few little weird things about it. Uh, you have to put in the width, height, bit rate, and frame rate. And of course, in WebRTC, you know these things, uh, the, the bit rate and frame rate can change, right? They're adaptable, so you don't really know. What is my, I know what, maybe I know what max frame rate was, uh, max bit rate, but what is the bit rate and frame rate at this moment, right? You don't really know. Um, so that seems a little hard. Uh, you do have to, um, <clears throat> but they are required. So you do have to put them in. And the question is, do they matter? Uh, for example, if you put in the, what you thought was the max frame rate or max bit rate, um, could you get a different answer if it was less, right? Or do these things make any difference? Can you put in an arbitrary value and still get your answer or not? So that's a little that's a little interesting. Um, or or if they did matter, would they only matter for smooth and power efficient, not for supported? Uh, now, the other thing is the the content type. I just put in video slash the, the codec, like video slash VP8 or VP9 or AV1 or H264. But um, the question is, what else goes into the content type? Um, and uh, I'm thinking of things like your profiles. 
Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about this later. And does that matter? Like, would I get a different answer, for example, if I put in uh, H.264 with a different profile, would I get a different set of scalability modes being supported? Um, so just observing this and playing around with it, um, it the other odd thing is that media capabilities currently returns a superset of the scalability mode values returned by sender.get capabilities. That is, doing this little iteration and calling get capabilities, they don't return the same set of scalability modes, um, which is a little bit odd because we're basically talking about, I think, the same thing, which is what's supported in WebHC. Um, so one of the important things here is for the for the document is how do I know what scalability mode values I can actually use in a transceiver and set parameters? So the whole idea of discovery is I only return a set of stuff that I can actually use in the APIs and web RGC. I think that's what, what we're looking for. Um, and if I'm going to get an error by putting it into these APIs, then it probably shouldn't have been returned in discovery. Uh, so when you say something, the meaning of the word supported should mean that it actually works in the API, in the WebRTC API in particular. Um, so another question is, is that always true? For example, if I if I call it on, if I got an answer that something was supported at a given width, height, bit rate, and frame rate, and I call the API, do I have a reasonable expectation that I'll, it'll actually work? Um, or not, or, or could it fail because the width, height, bit rate, and frame rate changed? That's my question. Um, the other thing which I'll note in a minute is that um, L1, T1 is not a valid scalability mode in any of the APIs. Uh, so there's a question about uh, whether that makes sense or not. So let me just show you the results here. So basically, uh, what I'm going to show you is a bunch of slides that compare the results from media capabilities with that from sender.get capabilities. Uh, for, for different codecs, so you can see what the differences are. So here is uh, H.264, uh, and all this is is it's a screenshot of the little little test that I wrote. Um, so for media capabilities, it says that H.264 supports L1, T2, so two temporal layers and three temporal layers, and that's about it. Nothing else is supported. But if I call get capabilities, um, I actually don't see any scalability modes for any of the combinations like uh, packetization mode, profile level, and level asymmetry. Um, and by the way, all I was putting into media capabilities was essentially what's in the MIME type and in the get capabilities, so video slash H264. Um, and I, you know, I guess it's conceivable, at least in get capabilities, that you could have different answers for the different values of the level asymmetry, packetization, and profile. Uh, but I didn't. I didn't try that uh, in media capabilities. Um, so anyway, there's a different answer here. There are more more things available in H.264 under media capabilities. But at least my understanding, and correct me if I'm wrong, Harold, is that um, these things are actually the scalability modes are actually not supported for H.264. Uh, I mean, they're supported Johan, in the Johannes, in the can you answer that? Answer that? Yeah. Uh, sorry, uh, sorry, I didn't get the last question out. Yeah, so it's saying, media capabilities saying that L1, T2, and L1, T3 are supported. But if I put this into a transceiver or set parameters, would I actually get that? Um, I don't know for now. So, so I think I think that, I think it's very good that you made this uh, investigation. So, so, uh, um, so these okay. numbers come from, currently sender get capabilities and the media capabilities use different sources. Like the, it's two more or less hard coded lists. Uh, and these should of course be synchronized uh, at least so that they re return the same, the same yeah. information. Um, yeah, so it looks to me, uh, just my hypothesis is that the media capabilities is returning so so Chromium does support L1, T2, and L1, T3 in the encoder. So for example, in, in web codecs, you can get these. But um, my understanding is that in WebRTC doesn't support it. So it's a higher level thing. Uh, yeah, I, I would think so as well. So, so when I, because I, I added things and made the capabilities, and then I, I talked to those that I 
believe the new direct what was the correct answer uh, and and I didn't really at that time know like what was really right what you actually could set in but see it was more like right. a low, low level okay what is right like, okay makes sense for the encoder yeah so this so basically uh <clears throat> media capabilities is returning what's supported it's basically returning the set of things that are supported in web codecs instead of WebRTC. I don't know if that's actually a useful thing, like whether a type of web codex makes sense. I think it probably doesn't because we already have an API for you know support in web codex, so we don't need that. Uh, but anyway, so that was a difference I saw. For VP9, it's again similar because get capability says only L1, T2, and L1, T3. And then uh, uh, you get a whole bunch of additional things in VP9 in media capabilities. So like uh, it says basically advertising spatial support. Um, so you can get like L3T2 and L3T3, and then a whole bunch of the key modes are supported in media capabilities as well. Um, and again, I think this is everything that the encoder can do, but I think, uh, so you could get all this stuff with uh, web codecs, but I don't think you can get them uh, with Weber to see, and then AV1, it's it's uh, it's closer. But one thing here that's interesting, interesting is so in media capabilities, you find out that you could actually get the S3T3 mode, which is kind of this weird simulcast mode where you're actually sending simulcasts on the same SSRC, um, and you can also get L2T3 key, and those are not that those two are not advertised in sender .get capabilities. Um, so I can yes, so what I'll do will do I, I would probably make a, like a scene just just uh, maybe like reducing the 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 set of of supported scalability scalability modes for media capabilities, making 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 them them the same as well. I mean, the question would be, you know, uh, yeah, if you uh, right, you could do that, um, or you know, I'm just interested. Like if I set S3 T3, would this actually come out in WebRTC? I haven't actually looked at the bitstream, so uh, I can't tell you if it will. But that would be that would be kind of the test, as if um, if that bitstream actually came out in, in WebRTC. Um, I, I yeah. would say that it probably won't. But it's just a matter of wiring up a few things to actually right. make it happen. Um, the Chromium implementation right now, I don't think is in any way spec compliant or complete. Mm -hmm. So I don't think we should necessarily use it as a reference. A lot of it was quickly hacked to actually see how the API would work and if it would be um, a good way forward. It's not necessarily an implementation uh, implementation reference right yeah so uh i mean i assume this this distinction can be fixed so it actually outputs i think the um i i think what i'm hearing here is that we have agreement that media capabilities should only output modes that are actually supported in webrtc when you use a type of webrtc do we have agreement on that yes Okay, that so sense. that's that's conclusion one is that this seems to be a bug. Um, I guess my other question is relating to the width, height, bit rate, and frame rate. Um, <clears throat> because in, in WebRTC, the sender.get capabilities, it's kind of a static thing. We're, we assume it doesn't, none of these things matter. Um, and so, uh, as you said, right, it's you're just looking up a static set of modes. And so I think I think that implies that in that with height, bit rate and frame rate, whatever you put in there doesn't doesn't make a difference. Is that right, Johannes? Not for this case, but since many capabilities, I mean, the purpose of that is not only to respond to right, scalability, right. One, but also to like power efficient and right. smooth, for example, and, and for those, it could matter. For those, it could matter, right? Some, 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 some encoders would have some like a maximum width and height, and and I mean, if you yes. software decoding it, it's very likely that you would not be able to encode certain frame rates 
because the computer cannot keep up with with that. Uh, this is actually the case. There are some uh, decoders that have um, that have issues with uh, widths and heights um, limitations. So right, right. But so yeah, the thing. So that it, that makes sense. I was expecting yeah that the smooth and power efficient could could change, but the basic uh, the scalability the supported would not change. Um, the thing is, it doesn't say that in the spec, so it's kind of hard to to know whether you can depend on that. I don't know if you would be willing to say that scalability mode would not. I mean, it. I mean, it could be that, like for example, if the hardware supported a scalability mode, the software didn't. Although that's probably never going to happen. Um, I guess it could change. Uh, mm, yeah, and also something that uh, we have is. Usually, um, a fallback uh, if the hardware fails to software. So right, right. We <laughs> will have pretty good coverage of all the of everything that is being asked. It should work, not necessarily very well. Right. So the other thing was how, uh, and we've been. I think we've been discussing this uh, in the other PR, but. Uh, how would things like the profile level, the packetization mode, and the asymmetry thing, how would those work in here? Would that be, did we decide to put this in the content type? I forget, uh, or in a separate attribute, or are we still discussing that? Uh, I'm not sure what, if it's size of things. The, the way I, I think the current implementation is so that the profile level can be put as content type right right yeah so uh basically here yeah, i didn't more, more I, less the same yeah. as the stp fmtp line right right so basically uh so if i wanted it to get exactly the same information as in sender dot capabilities like depending on the profile level and all of that junk then i would put that into the content type as it is in the stp fmtp line is that right uh, yes Yes. Okay. So then that does correspond to pretty much exactly what I get out of sender capabilities. Um, okay. Mm, yeah. Well, thank you. I think I think basically, um, I think we've more or less resolved most of the differences here. Um, I'm not going to write up a PR, but I think we're getting a lot closer to being able to replace sender dot capabilities. Uh, uh, Based on based on what I've just heard, I think we may need to clarify it a little bit in the in the spec just to make it clear as to what's expected. But um, mm. I, I think we're getting we're getting closer. Uh, so I don't think there's a uh, if you're asking if there's a conclusion for this one, Tim. I think not quite yet, but um, we need to fix some bugs and get some clarifications into media capabilities. But I I would say the it, it's looking like it, it could be a substitute for sender that capabilities. Let's put it that way. All right. So, uh, yeah. Oh, the other thing uh, it's worth mentioning is L1 T1 isn't supported in any of the codecs. And I guess my question for Harold is: uh, Is the intent that that would eventually be indicated as supported uh, somewhere? That, that was the intent. Intent when I invented it. Yes. Okay. So we that have, we have not submitted any change lists uh, 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 that that adds uh, that show it as being supported yet. Okay, but that would be the intent is to is yes. to have that be supported. Okay. All right. Um, so uh, so why don't we go uh, and talk about the other bugs? Um, so uh, issue fifty seven was handling of unknown scalability modes is unsupport is underspecified. And so, uh, sorry, uh, yeah. did we have time for? Uh, um, I was on the queue for a while, so I was just checking. Oh, if we sorry, were sorry, I, I wasn't <laughs> handling the queue. Maybe Harold, if you, if you could look at the queue, I was talking. So, uh, but anyway, Yanivar, speak up. Okay. I oh, yeah. So, so, yeah. So, I, I was going to, I had some questions, but then you uh, had the, the same questions on your slide. So, I think you're posting the right questions. Uh, I was just going to attempt some answers. Uh, <laughs> if we have okay. a parameter type for it's explicitly for WebRTC, I don't see what the purpose would be of returning any values that weren't 
available and usable in add transceiver. And whether add transceiver can fail due to differences in width and height, I don't think it can because at the time you're adding a transceiver, you don't know what the right, right. those parameters are going to be. So is it a possibility uh, on the MIDI capability spec to ask for maybe width, height, frame rate, bit rate to not be? I guess they're required in the web IDL, but it doesn't seem to make sense for the type web RTC. Is that something we could change or ask for? Johannes? Johannes? Um, I assume so. I think the problem will be then for the uh, like the other things that's the other things, sort, right? Like power efficient and uh, smooth. So how those should be handled. Um, so so. I, so Chris Cunningham, I guess he's he's like the owner of that the MIDI capability spec. So uh, I guess it's best to just uh, yeah. I, so I, I, I can I can start like uh, asking him a few questions about that uh, concern. Okay, so Johannes will carry carry that question over to to MIDI capabilities. At least initially, but then I think it's better that you well, like yeah. Uh, deep knowledge of this entire thing will carry on. But, but I can take like the initial yeah. question to him. That's a good start. Yeah. Thanks. So I think, Jan, Eva, the answer is uh, you're asking good questions. And I think they would probably need to be answered before we could decide that get capabilities can be done away with. But uh, I guess we, we need to we need to track the questions and then what whether we have answers. Great, thank that makes sense, Jan Ivar? Uh, yes, that makes sense. Thanks. OK, so we're we're uh, back to 57. So uh, Harold wrote up a little little test here uh, where he's got a scalability mode of total nonsense um, and uh, then goes and retrieves uh, encoding that scalability mode and asks, what is it going to be? And at the moment, uh, basically, chroma rotation returns total nonsense, which doesn't make much sense. Um, so the proposal on this one is to add to the operation of set parameters. Uh, if the scalability mode of any encoding is not supported by any codec and parameters are codecs, then reject, reject uh, with an invalid modification error. Um, and then add to the operation of add transceivers if it's not supported by any codec and sender.kit capabilities.kind.codex reject with newly created operation error. Uh, so I, I think this uh, proposal, well, basically, I'd like to ask a working group if, if you think the proposal makes sense. Um, I mean, it's in, uh, we're talking here about add transceiver. Uh, actually, uh, right. We're talking about add transceiver, so you don't know what codec is going to be selected, so that's why it's any codec here. Um, yeah. The, uh, one note about the text here is that uh, if we delete, uh, get, uh, uh, can you go um, next slide? If you if we delete uh, sender sender keep ke get capabilities kind codex uh, right. modes, then we have to replace that sentence with an internal slot thing. But that's right. That's just editing. Right. Uh, in any yeah. case, there is a lot of um, uses of get capabilities uh, codex, just even uh, for uh, set codec preferences. So I'm not sure that it's something that we could say it's removed, but uh, it's certainly an issue that uh, we need to make sure that it's a mode that is supported uh, by any of the codecs uh, of the kind. Yeah, I mean, we could decide to use, if we could decide to use media capabilities to get the scalability mode, but not remove get capabilities entirely. In which case, it could stay in there. Uh, at one question, what would be the difference of adding a transceiver with a, a with a scalability mode that is not supported by a, by any codec? 
that adding a support uh, but then setting a scalability mode mode uh, that it is supported by some codec by the by but the codec that it is finally used does not support it right so uh we will get to that i think in a minute <laughs> Sergio, <laughs> that's the second question uh, but but at least for now basically so what this means sergio is that base as you said uh you can request like you could have uh you could ask for l3 t3 right and you had vp9 as your preferred codec yep. so it, it if you got if you got vp9 you could you could want that but then you actually got vp8 so then the question is what you what you actually get uh all we're saying here is you're not going to get an error yeah right yep. you you could ask l3 t3 and but then at the end after negotiation succeeds then uh you should probably need to call get parameters to figure out what you got and if you got vp8 you're not going to have l3 t3 but we'll get to that in a minute mm -hmm. so anyway my question is does this proposal make sense to people um mm -hmm. Can I can I write down in the decisions that 57 the proposal is basically accepted? It does make sense to me. I'm just uh, worried that if we have two different types of errors that are from yeah. Maybe that's uh, something that is uh, that yeah. I mean, all the other behavior from the other APIs. In yeah, I think they're both. Uh, my my belief. Well, so no, it's it's different because one is set parameters and the other is add transceivers. Set parameters does typically return invalid modification, and then add transceivers typically returns operation error. So they are like in the other aspects, they are different between the two APIs. Uh, it is a little weird, but that's just how it works uh, today in the spec. I know the weirdest. Really yep. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure that uh, the errors were correct. And, uh, but, yeah, I think but... I think they are. I I'm still working on the on the PR, but uh, uh, to incorporate these both. But uh, uh, I think I think yeah. it is right. the shape of it looks uh, looks good to me. Otherwise, yeah. Okay, so is it fair to ask Tim to write down the decision proposal for issue fifty seven as accepted? I'm not really. Sure. I'm not really sure if I like this, uh, but well, I could live with that. I, I maybe. Uh, I think that we have a fixed list, list of uh, scalability modes, right? So maybe yeah. it's, it's maybe it's a good. Uh, it's better to not uh, tidy to if it is supported by the any codec or not, but just to check if the if the if the mode is in the list or not, because I, I will not have. As a developer, I would not like to have to check two different errors. Mm. Into if I can, if, if as we are going to do anyway, that is uh, to know if the if the scalability mode is already supported when the codec is selected. Um, I think that at least for me, it will be it will be better just to throw an error if the scalability mode is a total nonsense as and it is not in the list, but don't tie it to if it is supported or not by any code because you will have we will have another error for that specifically well uh but uh, i th i think the reason why it's the way it's proposed is because you could use set codec preferences for example uh to limit the number like you could make it only vp9 uh, or only vp8 and it, the difference would be if you made it only VP8 and you put an L3 T3, then you would in fact get an operation error. Uh, whereas in what you're proposing, you wouldn't because it would be legal for some codec, but not the mm -hmm. one you, you set in set codec preferences. So, uh, mm -hmm. so can set codec preferences change the codec that's being used? Yes. Uh, yes. During a connection? Yes. Well, you need uh, to renegotiate, sets... but. Yeah. If you do um, set codec preferences before a transceiver and before you have negotiation, then we should be able to detect that you're requesting something that is not supported by the codex uh, the user wants to use. But if, if a renegotiation is needed, then I could see some support for what, uh, for having, like, I, I sympathize with the idea that there are two ways to check. So if you set parameters, uh, 
uh, in order to figure out if it worked, you, you have to check for errors if it's in no codex, but you also have to check get parameters if they were in mm -hmm. some codex, but still not going to be right. used. And that seems a little awkward. Uh, so if we could, uh, we, we'll return to that particular question in the next slide. Next question. Right. Okay. Yeah, this is the next issue, I believe. Right. As for yes. operation error, I don't know that we have to be consistent. I mean, we could still use invalid modification error in that transceiver, I suppose. Yeah, I guess. But because um, operation error was a catch-all for all other errors. Yeah. Yeah. It was more uh, when I suggested the fix, I more or less picked it at random. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. no, but it, it is consistent with what's used in in uh, those APIs. Um, so what's anyway, Sergio, compatibility, you mean? Yeah. yeah. So Sergio, does this make any more sense now, or you still think it would be better to have check all of uh, just the modes, whether it's a legal mode or not? Hmm. I mean, I think that we are going to have some rough edges. For example, what happens if one codec is available with software encoding and a yeah. hardware encoding, and one supports it and the other one not? But you, when you set parameters, you still don't know which one will be used. So mm -hmm. this is what I'm kind of a, of a, of like not against, but it is like a, I think this a, that burden that it is supported or not may be misleading because it. Did, you never know really or there could right. be some ed cases in which you don't know if it is going to be supported or not at the end so right yeah so that's, also, that. that's also in the next question <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay so uh so then let's go to 58 uh that one is what wait 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 what yeah. am i writing down for 57. um how about this uh write down that the PR will include what's in the proposal, but we'll continue to discuss it in the PR uh, review. Mm -hmm. mm, okay. Because uh, there, people like question about the errors as well, so there's it's possible it could change. But we're I'm gonna uh, the instructions to me as editor is I will put in what's in the proposal into the PR, and then we'll we'll continue to discuss it. Okay. I, I would say that the PR is an improvement in any case. If we want to make it yeah. even stricter, uh, we could always do that. Mm. So I wouldn't want to block uh, merging of it. Well, it's not quite ready yet, but we're so okay. But, um, anyway, 58 is if you have specify no scalability mode. So in this little test, uh, we don't put anything into send. Uh, we put a uh, essentially uh, it's. Uh, we don't put anything into send encodings. And then the question is, what should the scalability mode be if you retrieve it? Um, and uh, currently it's missing. Um, and the proposal is, uh, don't do that. Return the default mode of the most preferred codec. Um, so, uh, and if negotiations completed, that would be the currently used scalability mode. Um, so it can depend on the negotiated codec and its default scalability mode. And then presumably would the default would be one of the L1, T2, or T3 modes. Um, so, uh, yeah, so if you set this, you can uh, and do a get parameters. Uh, again, we haven't uh, haven't completed negotiation, I guess, uh, and that would return the default mode of the most preferred codec. <clears throat> so, for example, for VP8, if that was most preferred, it would be L1 T2. Does this make sense? It makes sense to me. Yeah, it makes sense to me. Um, I think it, I think it's uh, it's mostly the, the best best we can do but it yeah. is one question is this this also the default um, behavior for the rest of the encoding parameters i mean because because we are not setting the the must be rate or the other other um if i mean i i don't remember the specs so sorry for that but if i think that the, the behavior should be consistent with the rest of the parameters i mean if we set it 
I think that right now it's on the only, you only retrieve it if you set it, not because it, what is the the value for the codec or that has been negotiated or well, anything like that. It's a little it's a little weird because I guess this came about because for VP8, right, the default is actually L1T2, not L1T1. <laughs> so you're actually getting L1T2 now, Sergio. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just you don't really think about it. Uh, what could you do with that answer? Like, realistically, what could the developer actually gain from knowing that at that point prior to negotiation? Well, if you have uh, picked, uh, if you have done set uh, set codec preferences, then uh, this case, and then you do get parameters. You should get the information that that uh, there is a valid mode for at least one of the codecs in the that you set that you set in the preferences. That's the only use I can think of. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, and, and it was surprising to me that the uh, VP8 default is L1T2, but it's useful to know it. Yeah. So, yeah. It, it, it actually oh, caused some consternation some time ago when we changed it from L1T2, T3 to L1T2. Yeah. yeah. With no way of changing it back. I believe it's actually faster to encode. So, that's one of the reasons why we have uh, temporal layers uh, enabled. So, uh, can is this acceptable to the working group? This proposal. I say yes. Okay. Uh, all right. Um, all right. Yeah, looks good to me. Okay. So, sa same decision as for the previous one. Uh, will be included in PR discussion. Will will continue in PR. PR, right? Uh, issue fifty nine is what is the scalability mode if the preferred mo scalability is not supported on the request codec? So this is uh, Sergio's question, yeah. right? The weird situation, you put in L3, T3, you don't know what you're gonna get. Uh, and here we play with uh, sender dot capability, the capabilities to make it VP8. Um, so uh, you're not gonna get L3, T3. Um, so uh, I guess, uh, so what should, uh, get parameters return. Um, at least as of now, it returns L3T3 uh, because that's what the user requested and you haven't completed negotiation, right? So you don't formally know that you didn't get uh, you didn't get uh, VP9 or something that would support L3T3. Um, so the proposal for this one is get parameters always returns the currently used scalability mode. Um, so before negotiation, that's the mode that you asked for in either add transceiver or sender uh, dot set parameters. But uh, and then it, it, you, if it's if you didn't request anything, again it goes back to the default mode on the most preferred. Um, and then after negotiation, it would be uh, the the currently used uh, scalability mode. Um, so. Basically, with these things, uh, so before negotiation, before we found out that we got VP8, you would still see L3, T3. But then after, uh, if you got VP8, I guess uh, the answer would be, Harold, that you'd get L1, T2, right? Because that would be yeah. the default. If, if, uh, if, if VP8 was selected by, the neg ne and, uh, by negotiation, right. The yeah. Um, then it would be L1, T2. So and that would be L1, T2 in Chrome. If another implementation doesn't right. support temporal layers, we might return um, L1, T1. Right. I, I, so, I believe that this proposal is about the same as uh, the, the PR from the previous issue. Basically, yeah, pretty parameters close. returns always the right. uh, mode that is currently in use, uh, which is uh, something that absolutely makes sense. Yeah. 
So uh, do we have consensus for what's being proposed here in 59? So uh, I have a concern here, but um, the way get parameters and set parameters are structured, you have to call get parameters uh, as a basis for the what you're going to set. Hmm. So it's important that, uh, so after you do a couple, an iteration of this, you can no longer differentiate between what an ap application desired and what was just passed through from get parameters. So for what we get parameters to return here, we should make sure we return something that's innocuous and won't necessarily be interpreted later as an application preference that we not, now must abide by. And do we even support empty string as input for some of these? Um, no, and, uh, and also remote. Yeah. I don't, right. I don't think so we, it does. Right. So it has to be something that set parameters would accept. And uh, I don't know if we've covered this before, but uh, get parameters is synchronous, but set parameters is not. So you could actually have a race here with negotiation potentially on set parameters. But... That's why we did. Uh... Oh, yes, you I can. forget if we solved. Uh, let me see. But, uh... Did we put set parameters on the like, operations queue? Um... I'm not sure if I agree in the in the before negotiation when the before negotiation before no. the negotiation is completed. I mean, why have do we have to change the scalability mode if it is valid for some codex? I mean, it may not be. For example, I uh, configure the code the codec in the SVU. I don't choose. I don't change the preference in the in the in the browser. And but I only, for example, only return BP9 or AB1. AB1. Let's say AB1 that has more scalability modes. Uh, why the the Chrome has to change this scalability modes when at the end it's going to be supported? And again, because if I do a get parameter and set parameters, it will be overwriting what I I put at the beginning. So right. So I think that we should not change it before negotiation. I, I agree that getting uh, that having post negotiation and updating it, what the the, uh, the scalability mode that it is currently being used by the code is a good feature, but I don't think that we really need it before negotiation. Uh yeah, I think I agree. I and mean, if it can cause trouble in the API. Yeah. So how about this um, as a resolution? We will uh, uh, we will uh, in, we will discuss this in the PR. Um, but uh, it sounds like we do have agreement post negotiation. But then the question is, mm. what is return pre? Uh, yeah. Uh, but we'll try to post negotiation. We'll try to put this into the PR. Okay, so uh, I'm almost out. Of, I'm out of time here, but uh, I just want to point people to PR sixty four, which is what contains the, what will hopefully become the uh, fix to issues fifty seven, fifty eight, and fifty nine. I basically added a whole behavior section, which attempts to uh, describe the behavior of edge and receiver set parameters and get parameters uh, for all of the things that we've just talked about and, and more. Um, so uh, anyway, uh, it doesn't currently it doesn't quite conform to what we just said, but I'll I'll try to fix it and hopefully people can review it and we'll we'll get to uh, an acceptable PR fairly soon. Uh, Flora, anyway, you're on the queue. Yeah. Yes, uh, I have a question uh, regarding uh, fifty nine. Yeah. If we request, uh, let's say, L3T3 uh, with um, codex VP8 and VP9 in this order, would it be acceptable uh, or possible in any way to actually have the browser use VP9 instead of VP8 as maybe we say, oh, you, re you want L3T3, so probably would be better to use a different codec than the first one in the list. Is it something that is possible within the, the specs? Well, you, 
I mean, it I, I, it would be weird to have side effects because if you wanted BP9 to be preferred, you could certainly set that and set codec preferences, right? Mm -hmm. But if you didn't, I think it has to assume that you, you wanted it to be that way for some weird reason. I guess, yeah, it would make sense to then reorder the codex and put VP8 at the end. Yeah. I see. Yeah, thank you. Okay. So um, basically, we've we've got this PR64. It isn't quite right yet, but um, we can fix it and have people review it and uh, and try to make progress. So I think we're, we're a little bit over time, so I, I don't want to steal everything from Elad, and uh, I want to turn it over to you, Elad. Uh, okay, thank you, and uh, no worries. So uh, I imagine my mic is working correctly. Yeah, it is. Perfect. Uh, so uh, I'm here to talk about multi-capture, a case where uh, basically instead of just capturing one tab, one window, one screen, you want to capture a few of them. And uh, there are, oh, one slide backwards, please. Thank you. Uh, so uh, let's discuss about a couple of use cases. So uh, use case number one, uh, maybe you're recording a couple of those and then you just want to later uh, mesh them all together into one kind of video. So you're capturing a couple right now. Uh, maybe you're doing that for uh, compliance purposes, right? Like maybe you need to show that everything you did uh, is always captured and is uh, you can always reference it later. And if you've got a couple of monitors, you still want to do it on all the monitors. And maybe, and this is the case that's most interesting to me personally, uh, maybe you're teaching something and you're capturing a couple of tabs or a couple of windows and you're streaming them all upwards to the cloud and each individual student actually chooses which one to get back in full resolution at any given moment. So you're streaming a couple of things and there are separate streams and the user just multiplexes each user separately. Um, but this is um, besides the point. Next slide, please. So the, um, can you do that now? And the answer is yes, uh, you could, but there are gonna be a couple of uh, problems with the way you would do that. So currently you would call Get Display Media and you would have to either ask the user ahead of time, okay, so how many of those do you want? And then you would have to call Get Display Media that many times. Or you could uh, ask, make the user press, I want one more every single time and that would be necessary because you would need a new activation and you would also need to know that the user wants one more and when that happens you're also kind of burdening the user with the um with the task of remembering what they've already selected so you can imagine that if they're trying to select let's say three or four different things now they need to know oh i chose a then they get prompted to choose it again but they choose b and then they kind of need to choose C, but wait a second, they're not, what if they're not labeled like that? What if it's not ABC? It's like dog, cat, and pigeon, right? Like you, you're not easily gonna always remember which you've already selected. So this is a suboptimal user experience. It's a suboptimal application experience. Nobody benefits here. Next slide, please. So uh, what if we could solve this? And this is just one possibility, but uh, we could discuss others. Uh, but what if we just had another function next to get display media, and it was called get display media set. And when you call that, each user agent would choose their own UX, but I just threw together something that Chrome could use. What if you just had checkboxes, for example, and the user could choose as many of those as they, they wanted. And as you can see here, it's patently obvious which ones have already been chosen or not, right? So before you actually press share, it's kind of difficult to, you know, choose the same one a few times or to forget one of those because you can see a holistic picture of everything you've already selected. Now, this is UX. This is not necessary. Uh, we don't actually mandate that, but it would be possible with a get display media set approach. And obviously all of the other problems would also be taken care of. So only once uh, user activation, uh, user cannot uh, forget what they've already ch uh, chosen. Um, and they can also look and see, does that make sense as a whole? All of them together and overall, a lot less user clicks, so applications are going to be happy. Uh, yes, Tim?
Yeah, I really don't like the use of the word set in that context. Certainly not at the end. Sure, but uh, the, the name is your uh, the name is just for illustration. Uh, it doesn't even have to be a new function. Um, on GitHub, I suggested that we could actually do that as an ex extra parameter for Get Display Media. I think that deciding exactly the shape, like the name or something like that, comes after deciding that this is interesting and that we want this. And then we can discuss how it is going to look like. Um, Yanivar? Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, I have also reservations, but I can uh, express them at the end. It wasn't specific to. Uh, but okay. yeah, I also share the, we, we wouldn't want, uh, you could add an option. So I would agree you, if we wanted this, which I'm not agreeing to necessarily, but if we wanted this, we could add an options argument to get this play meeting for sure. I think that would be better. Okay. So as I mentioned, uh, if now is a good time, then I would say that on GitHub, my initial proposal uh, for this was to add another parameter. And the parameter would be the max number of streams that you, the application, are able to handle, right? Like you don't want the user choosing 20. That's of no use to you. And uh, by default, we'll just pretend, uh, well, sorry, by default, you get one, which is the current behavior. And then we say, okay, if you've not specified an explicit default, we just return one promise that resolves into a media stream. And if you explicitly choose one, or I'm sorry, if you explicitly sure. uh, choose anything yep. more than I one, know. then you get a, a sequence and the sequence is kept at that many entries, but it could, the user could still choose less. So I, I agree with all that, but I don't believe I agree with the use case is rewarded solving. So maybe I should state my objection here, and that I don't necessarily. So I have a question: How many, uh, how many uh, uh, captured surfaces do you think a teacher would set up in this way? Um, I would say it's really like three up to the teacher. on average. Um, but if it's like three or fifteen. I don't um, think that's so, so my concern. Like I, I, yeah. I could really not hazard a guess here. No, I, well, I'm trying to get a sense of uh, the the problem that needs solving here because I don't see a problem that needs solving because I worry that this is a case where an application is creeping into browser UX. So if I'm I'm not a teacher, but I would imagine if I had three groups A, B, and C, and I wanted to give each one of them uh, a captured surface, it would be very important that A gets what's intended for A, B gets what's intended for B. And C gets what intended for C, and that they don't get mixed. So, an application, I would imagine, um, in content UX, where you click on A, and then you get a picker, and you specify what's for A, and then you close the uh, the prompt, and then you pick B, and you repeat the process, which already okay. works today. So, so I uh, sh I showed one use case, and you showed another. My use case requ uh, means that all of the uh, all of them are equal, whereas you have a different use case where order matters and where it's really important not to mix them. And I agree that in your use case, probably we don't want to use get display media set. Uh, we probably want to get uh, use get display media and the application should probably also show that the teacher later, hey, by the way, this is what you chose for group A, that's for B, that's for C, here are previous, would you like to start sharing remotely? That's your use case. Uh, I'm not aiming to solve absolutely every single use case that exists. I think that I've shown some use cases that are compelling. And I really don't see uh, why it would be better to force an application for a, a teacher that wants to share three or four different tabs or three or four different windows uh, to keep on forcing the user to come back to the application, click I want to share one more, then try to navigate both the list as well as everything else mm. and find. And uh, I would challenge you to tell me why you object to this API uh, not on the merits of well, this particular use case, not on different use cases. Well, I, I don't think we need to solve this problem. I don't think we would implement this because this is easily solved better, I claim, with existing APIs. Because I don't see that the burden, I don't see that the user is necessarily burdened by being able to multi-select in, in the browser prompt. I don't think they think of a browser prompt as different from other UX. So they can already pick this. Uh, and I think we've already solved, we're, we're in the process of solving uh, prompt problems where we can, the application can already pick a default category. So it can, the prompt can already open, uh, if you, I'm assuming we're sharing tabs. So it could open with a list of tabs. Uh, I'm so sorry, going to be, I'm, 
I'm yeah. sorry to inter interrupt you here, Yanipar, but uh, this is not true. We have not uh, uh, reached consensus on that particular thing. We've been discussing it for several years, and I see no reason to believe that we will suddenly reach consensus uh, in the near future. I hope we do, but we cannot assume that. No, I, I don't mean to assume it, but I think that is the, the avenue that I would uh, follow. I think that's more, much more likely to reach consensus than, than this proposal. I think these are orthogonal issues, because even if we can immediately whisk away the user towards sharing a tab, if the user wants to select multiple tabs, it is still uh, somewhat challenging. But, but I can't imagine a teacher that would assign, uh, let's say, three or, or, or more things and not care about which one goes to which group. Well, it, it, there might not even be groups. It could be that I am teaching somebody how to code, and I've got uh, Visual Studio Code, and I've got some reference material open, and I've got a couple of those, and I want to share all of them. And I don't want to stream all of them as one single uh, uh, video. I want to send all of them in full resolution, and each given student, when they want, they just zoom in on one of those at full resolution. So all different uh, students are getting all different videos. They just choose which one to get at any uh, moment. So I won't debate whether this is a useful ca use case or not, but I think that's a very marginal use case, very specific, that uh, can already be solved other ways. And the Chrome status right now says that get display media is like uh, less than a, a thousand or five, uh, like the usage of get display media is much less than 1%, like it's a fraction of a percent. So, and people who would want to have this um, a special Chrome UX for um, multiple, picking multiple things at the same time uh, and not be guaranteed any order, it's, it's very slim. And I don't think we would implement it. Okay. And I don't think we would currently be interested in implementing and solving that problem. I see. Because but if they, came, if they came to us and expressed support for this particular API, would you change your mind? Well, it's it definitely, I would like to hear. Uh, yeah, we definitely. Uh, consider uh, if this use case could be expressed and explained better. Yes, for sure. Okay, then at least we have a hypothetical way forward. Uh, anybody else on the queue? Okay. So I just, that... I just want, want to add that uh, I, I see a point in this use case. With, uh, the fact that you can't control which order the the streams appear in is, is a bit of a pain because then you have to figure out some way to identify which one is which for the use cases where where that matters. But uh, that's a different set of problems. Capture handle might solve that, for instance. I I do think. That one aspect of this would be useful, which would be for uh, would be to highlight ones that were already being um, captured. I mean, I think I can definitely see, like, if you get if you want to capture two, knowing what the one that you've already captured is has some merit. Um, I'm think from my own practice I can't think of an instance where I wanted to more capture more than two but yes it would be nice to remember whether I'd captured the slides or the notes or whatever it was um, already so I can see I can see merit in in like somehow indicating that that you've already captured this one so there's no point in you capturing it again but I don't see the personally don't have a use for capturing multiple in one operation. That's a good point, but that could be done today without any new API, I think. So, yeah, you only I, highlight well, you might want to hint them. to say that this is what you were going to do. Uh, I think that this is a good idea, but this is not an idea that requires new standards. Uh, it is possible to make that change, and I've heard that idea before, and it could happen. Uh, with regards to what Harold said about, yes, it is a pain point that we don't let the user order this. So first, we could amend that. Like we could uh, say that the order should be influenced, uh, influenceable by the user, or 
if we just return all of this, uh, A, as uh, Harald said, capture handle works, but also uh, it could be that the application that gets all of those just lets the user seize them, lets them uh, like, through previews, lets the user reorder them and then stream them later. Uh, and even in that case, we still uh, save a lot of clicks by allowing the user to select all of them all at once. So I don't see anyone on the queue. So, uh, I had one comment more, which is that uh, one thing that the working group has encouraged a lot is uh, uh, prompt bundling. So I would encourage uh, um, browser vendors that want to explore new UX like this um, to uh, experiment. Uh, I think they can already do that by calling get display media many, uh, several times, like 10 times uh, synchronously, and do a promise all. And in that case, uh, if a, a vendor wants to, uh, a user agent can easily detect that because they're all called from the same JavaScript task. So if they wanted to, they could then create a bundled prompt and say, oh, this user wants to have multiple, uh, wants to capture, ask the user multiple times the same question. And that, that's perfectly fine, I think, for a user agent to, it doesn't need any spec change to uh, experiment with the UX in those cases. And I, But this, of course, would assume that you would have to come up with some limit, some arbitrary limit, like no more than 10 captures, for instance. And then you would just reject the remaining promises if they only pick three, for example. So there I just see, there seems to be some ways to experiment with this and maybe progress can be made that way if that turns out to be very successful. Um, it's not clear to me what the uh, barrier to entry to very successful would be uh, and also um, when we spoke about this out of band, you and I, uh, I had some problems with that, but it's going to be a bit difficult uh, to discuss all of those details uh, in video. I think it's better to continue that on GitHub. So if you uh, want to suggest that option on the GitHub issue, issue, I would love to answer it there. Uh, sure. I, I think I added that comment already. I wouldn't promise all. Or did I, not? I can do that if I didn't. Sorry. I um, thought I did, but I'll double check. Okay. Um, next slide, please. Uh, sorry, Bernard, next sli slide, please. So, um, before I continue with this particular slide, uh, let's just uh, clarify the premise. Uh, we've heard me who teaches this, and we've heard Yanivar who opposes this, and absent currently are all of the potential customers that would have this. So, I would just uh, mentioned that we're going to proceed the discussion under the assumption that I could uh, convince Yanivar that uh, this is actually of significant enough interest that we should pursue it. So in that case, uh, it would be interesting to discuss, A, do we want a new function or do we want an extra parameter, Yanivar and others? I believe uh, at least Yanivar has mentioned that he would prefer a parameter. Am I right? Yes, I think actually uh, there are unrelated issues, uh, for instance, with uh, feedback I've given on capture handle and other things that suggest that it, uh, a common problem we have is how to return more useful information from get display media. And one of them actually might ironically be to pass in a controller object, which suggests uh, also having an options object, a secondary parameter to get display media. So I could see and that's also, and spec-wise, that's a common way to add, uh, like for fetch, for instance, uh, rather than minting new methods, uh, which dilutes the language of, uh, whenever we talk about screen capture, it's good to be able to refer to a specific method rather than a plethora of method, depending on uh, configuration. So I think this as sounds like a configuration option. As a matter of taste. Well, and, and common pattern. In the W3 well, thing. it's still a matter of taste. We have uh, yeah. C++ uh, style guidelines that both have at various times both over uh, outlawed overloading, uh, outlawed default parameters, allowed default parameters, uh, encouraged the uh, uh, encourage optimal optional parameters, encouraged encouraged overloads. Uh, yeah, this is very much bike shedding. Yeah, yeah, taste. Agreed. <laughs> I wouldn't go all the way to back shot. Okay. Um, 
we can continue with that later. Um, another thing that I would like uh, the feedback of the working group on is have uh, I neglected to think about any issues that we could have with having multiple types of display services? Like, for example, should the user be allowed to choose two tabs, one window in the monitor, or is that a problem? And maybe we want to allow the user to only choose, okay, you choose N tabs or N windows or N monitors, and you can choose whichever, but you cannot mix and match. And if nobody speaks, I will assume that there are no issues either way. I do see an issue with uh, outlawing mixing. And that okay. if I want to show you um, my web page and how it renders on the monitor, uh, outlawing mixing will prevent me from doing that. It's okay. a very, special, very specialized use case, but, uh, but uh, I don't like outlawing things. So it, um, unless uh, there's a good reason to outlaw it. Uh, I agree we should probably allow it unless somebody can think of a limitation that we run into. Well, I think we should be careful in interpreting silence from the working group to mean that there are no issues. Like when the first <laughs> question should be whether we want to adopt and whether we think this is a problem worth solving. Noted. And if we don't feel that, then that no one's going to have any uh, further comments, I think. And we already taken that to the to the to the GitHub issue, where Ella has promised to show the support for the uh, show the people who are or the use cases uh, from real life that are uh, interested in this uh, particular solution. Great. I think we've got Bernardo on the queue, and I think Sergio unmuted, so I guess he is uh, implicitly also on the queue. Yeah. So what I was going to say a lot is I think um, the the audio is a little interesting because it's really the system audio, right? So it doesn't matter what you chose; you're you're only going to get that. Am I right? You. Yeah, that's you the can't last get audio point. from one window or something. That's the last uh, bullet point. Uh, I guess you could get audio. I guess it's operating system dependent. If you could get window audio, um, at least from tabs, you can get audio. So we could, so long as the user only chooses tabs, they could have separate audios or not. But then it becomes a little bit tricky because the user cannot easily, like, I guess UX could allow the user to say this with audio, this without. Yeah. Uh, and when it comes to several monitors, then it does become, I mean, the UX could show that, okay, you're show, either sharing audio for all or none. But then the question becomes, OK, so which of the several streams has the audio track? So, right, right. But then you could say it would be the first one, right? So I think there are um, solutions to all of these problems. And I mostly uh, wondered whether there were any other problems I was unaware of. Yeah, I generally agree with Harold that it, it's all of the restrictions that could make your life complicated. Um, yeah, I, I would like to have one question. Do you have in Chrome a telemetry or something like that that uh, that reflects how um, many people are using multiple capture times, multiple uh, capture of the display media simultaneously? I mean, uh, I'm sorry. I'll, did, did you ask if I've got any statistics about how many are doing it at the moment? Yeah, because I mean, for knowing if there is some problem that to be solved, that I mean. If uh, there are a lot of people using it, it, it could be worth it to 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 discuss it. But I mean, I think that there are too many corner cases here. Uh, if there are only one or two services using it out there, maybe yeah, and they have already a solution that it is calling get display media for several times. That um, may be a bit inconvenient, but also will solve other issues. For example, being able to to choose exactly what you want to share beforehand and not afterhand. So, because uh, with this, uh, you have to first choose what you want to to display, and then you have to reorder and assign, and you have also to match and uh, to be able to tell the user how many um, um, uh, screens do you want to capture with, uh, because, I mean, you are not going to have, maybe you have a fixed UI. So, I think that it has a, a, a lot of, um, Issues that might be solved. I'm not saying that it, they cannot be solved, but it would be good to know if there, there is many people already 
uh, having these issues or this is uh, just a, a problem that it is not existing and we are trying to solve things or or make a specification work that it is not going to be implemented in Firefox or because it is not existing and for the development it would be as useful as uh, not having it implemented in nowhere. See, uh, I have a minimum of one um, partner that's interested. And <laughs> I can check. No. <laughs> okay. and so just a second. So I uh, obviously I'm here uh, pitching this because mm -hmm. of that one partner, and um, I can see and uh, talk to others, of course. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I have a couple in mind, and I would be surprised if if we could not find any. I, I agree that if nobody were to adopt this, then it would mm. be useless. It's not clear to me at which point we actually make the cutoff of saying like this is enough partners or they're big enough or they've got enough usage. Um, it's an interesting yeah. question in general, not just for this particular proposal. Well, uh, it, I mean, the, the, for me, the bar is if it can be done already or not, and we are just using the the, the user experience or something like that. So um, I mean, if there was minor the usage, but it's something that can, can cannot be done right now. I'm all in for adding new APIs, but if it is something that uh, it's already be possible to be done, and we are just adding something that it is allowed to do it in a different way, but we haven't it doesn't have much adoption, then I'm less prone to to specify it, especially if uh, there could be a lot of corner cases that could be dangerous. So, but anyway, that's my two cents. Uh, understood, and I would just mention that there are a couple of uh, services that basically their entire uh, their entire claim to fame is that mm -hmm. they allow you to record videos of your current screen and overlay your own video on top of that. And obviously, uh, they are going to be interested in additional APIs exactly in that. So one person's uh, corner case is another person's main case. Right. Uh, may I, I add that I think Sergio had a great point about uh, if we could measure this and we find that um, presumably the, these users are these um, are able to make it work today by calling get, get display media many times during the same session. And that seems something we could measure. And I think measurements that prove there's a significant amount of users doing this would be very convincing. Uh, understood. If I can come up with these measurements, I will. I think it's more likely to uh, that I would come with uh, um, testaments of interest uh, from parties that want to use this. Okay. Uh, yeah, maybe I should be more blunt and say I, I think if we measured these things, I don't think the numbers would support the use case. Sure, but then uh, my prediction. But, yeah. But it's, I would be very convinced by those numbers if they were easily predictable, but I don't want to create work for anyone. It's always difficult to say how much of something does not exist because it's too hard at the moment and the new API is going to ship that and how much it is just, you know, a corner case. And I agree. Uh, I don't think that measurements are going to be very interesting either way. And that's why I would actually prefer to proceed by getting you um, uh, support, testaments of support. So I have Tim on the queue. Yeah, I, I, I'm a bit nervous about using metrics as the only reason for doing this um, or the only reason for not doing this. I, I, think, I think if it's an API that, that clearly does something useful um, and there are some people who, you, who would use it, then I think we should seriously consider it. I, I'm not convinced of that yet, but I'm prepared to listen. Uh, that's all for me. Okay. Okay. Did we resolve anything from that? So how do I write I was, my notes? That's what I was going to ask. <laughs> so, uh, so, so the uh, we see, we seem to have resolved that uh, whether or not this should be uh, this proposal should be pursued further is uh, dependent on uh, whether we can identify people who, who want to use it. And, we'd, and we should also note that uh, the question has been raised about whether, uh, whether the, the permission prompt coalescing is uh, able to achieve the same functionality. Um, by the way, I've just thought about another use case. 
uh, and this one is specifically for Bernard. Um, imagine that the user captures multiple different documents, right? Uh, all of them uh, belonging to Microsoft Office. And at any given moment, you only want to share remotely the one that's currently active. But the yeah. user just says, hey, I actually, I'm sure I'm in one, I'm collaborating on all four of these. And then whenever one becomes active, it can communicate back to Teams, hey, I'm active, start streaming me. Now, okay. using Capture Handle, you solve the uh, ordering issue. So the user doesn't actually need to tell you which is which. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, some of these things, uh, you know, uh, relate to specific applications so you wouldn't necessarily you can't judge whether somebody would want to use this by whether they're keep calling display media multiple times right exactly so at the moment what the user like that would do is they would click something that only exists in chrome and in edge which is share this tab instead but mm. they wouldn't even need to do that you would save them even that effort if you just made sure that as soon as they switched to another tab made another tab active uh, that is one of the ones currently being shared. You just start streaming that one. Right. So uh, if you want to file a statement of support, uh, I'll send you the issue. So, yeah. so Harold, just to re-capture um, that second uh, action item, which was about permission prompt bundling, who's going to look into that? So that's a good question. Um, yeah, Neva, you, suge you, you suggested it. Uh, and so uh, either you can sell, sell the idea to the people who want to want to use multi-capture or... Uh, well, yeah. Well, I, I committed to... I committed to uh, posting an example on the issue, which I believe is issue 204 in screen share that we're looking at multi-capture, right? Uh, so you can use promise all. So I'll, I'll put some, I'll put the JavaScript in that I think is a pattern that uh, could be used. Other than that, I don't have much uh, as far as resources to offer in. Um, I think it would also would be useful to, my feedback from this, it would be useful to track how many times people use get display media in the session and how I get better telemetry on those things. So I encourage other vendors to that are interested to track that as well. Um, but my prediction will be that the, the get display numbers are already so low that uh, it's hard to find um, gold. Uh, in the right again, I, I disagree with this methodology. If you uh, capture, if you measured how many times get display media was called 10 years ago, you would find that it was called zero times. Well, it's still you know a fraction of get to get user media, for example. So uh, it doesn't mean it's not important because people do presented meetings. Otherwise, the meetings stop functioning. So there's a presenter versus audience ratio. I agree. Uh, no, I don't, what, uh, what what I mean to say is that before something exists, you cannot say that there is no interest oh. for it because it does not exist. <laughs> but we have clearly identified here that it is possible to do this with existing get display media by calling it multiple times. So well, I'd be surprised if it would be too much. For, for some value of this, and, and provided that mm. you have a certain change of UX. Mm. I mean, you right. can't, you can't uh, the calling multiple times uh, requires that you have a have a cap on the, on the number of things you want to capture and uh, that you have some sane way of signaling that Yes, the user selected N, uh, five and not, uh, not Sure, well, well, and now, I, well, sorry, I'm confusing things. Uh, that was my idea of calling get display medium multiple times in parallel, yes. Then you need to have some kind of cap. But uh, an even simpler approach would be you just call get display media once and allow the user to drive the process and click the button again. Very manual setup, but I don't think manual setup and, and this sort of pressure to save clicks here is necessarily correct because uh, there's such so much complexity here. There's like uh, audio, we talked about yeah. whether or not you want audio for each thing. So I don't think that's an unreasonable amount of effort to set this up, And it, but the, it is possible to set up today. Uh, so, and you we could measure that. No, but, but there are use cases that were simply not uh, 
feasible. So if we take again the idea of one tab has a video conference and four other tabs have different documents, then at the moment for Chrome and the Edge, if we looked at our statistics, we would find right. that the user an application would just ask you to share once and then rely on the fact that you're gonna manually press share this tab instead each time because it was just not uh, feasible to call get display media four times, let you choose all of them and then start uh, you know choosing which one to relay remotely based on which one is active at any time. Yeah. That was just not a feasible user journey. But if you make it possible, it could be that they would start using yeah. it. Yeah, I think there might have been times during this actual meeting when we would have used something like this. Like, uh, you know, for the, for the demo of media capabilities, I probably would have put another tab, but it's just too much hassle to switch tabs. So it didn't bother. I, <laughs> I'm going to be a bit blunt, but anyway, I think that the lot, if you have just brought this sample from the beginning, we would, would understand what you were trying to do because the other use cases didn't make much sense. Now with the use case about being able to share multiple documents in, in Teams and and in, in Google Meet, that seems the, the, a good fit for this, uh, the, this API is much easier to understand. Yeah, I agree. Excellent, so we've got two converts. Hmm. I only thought about it during this meeting. Yes, yeah, sure. <laughs> I think we've learned that we need uh, better use cases and we can write those up and hopefully they will be more convincing. So are you saying there are potentially three converts? Uh, no, I'm not saying that. <laughs> Potential. I, so I'm being nice. Not closed. But uh, let's, uh, uh, so the decision is that Elad will continue on use cases. Yeah. Awesome. And Yaniva will write up his, uh, his multi thing in more detail so that's uh, is that all yes i think that's it um one okay. thing we didn't ever bring up in any of this which is that the other alternative is to share the whole screen which is what the users are going to end up doing at the moment if you if the option is to is to pick four windows none of them are going to do it they're just going to share everything because it's just they'll hide the, their email they're all iconify their email and then share everything because it's just quicker so uh that's why i think that the statistics path is going to be grabbing statistics on multiple sharing isn't isn't going to be useful because in reality nobody would do it I, I think i need to understand the use case better because that's not how i envisioned the teacher uh supporting Okay. Right. I mean, I think if the if the app has engineered it such that it each of them is separately streamed, then obviously they have to be separate streams. But but if you're using an app like like this, a more general purpose app like this, then what you're going to do is is shrug. Instead of flipping between things, you're going to together share the whole screen and then maybe manage that screen by maximizing different windows on it um, and and using controls you already have. So I, I kind of yeah, I just want to emphasize I don't think that, that for this case metrics are particularly interesting. They won't they won't sway me. I'm not actually a fan of the API, but and I don't yet see a need for it, but metrics wouldn't sway sway me either way, I don't think. Uh, we have a uh, region on the queue, I think. Right. Yeah. Sorry. Just to, this is not with the multi capture uh, going a bit out of agenda because we are running out of time, I guess. So we're out I of just wanted, but oh, yeah, I, yeah. I just wanted to um, ask the group about some review comments on the media capture extensions uh, PRs we have put out. It's been some time. I mean, uh, with examples and everything like. Uh, I think we have tried to uh, utilize all the comments last time Harald and others have given. So it would be great, uh, I mean, not here in GitHub, if you could just put up some comments and uh, if you want any more clarifications from, from our side, uh, I will be happy to uh, put up in GitHub. So, so would, you, would you be willing to present uh, this in March? Yes, 
I can. Okay, so we, we'll put I, you on the agenda for March. Okay, uh, but uh, a bit of GitHub, is it, uh, would it be okay? Harald yeah, and Johnny Bird? Yeah, we can have discussion in Git, GitHub as well. But yeah. I'll, try, I'll try to get, get the review back. Get, oh, great. Get back the review. Great, thank you, okay. thank you. Thanks yeah, everybody. Later. I, I think we're out of time now and I, I have a hard stop, so I'm, I'm gonna leave. But okay. Take care everybody, bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.